We're out here at number 10 at Royal Dornick. This is unprecedented. We have a tin cup-esque situation. It has nothing to do with carrying a hazard. It has to do with him <laughs> firing hosel rockets <laughs> into the gorse yeah, on the right. I'm moving, I'm moving back. This, this, yeah. this, go, this one might go backwards. This is our third. Oh! <laughs> Another one! <laughs> again! <laughs> again! Hit him again! <laughs> Royal Dornick uh, was the perfect capstone for our trip. Uh, I think if you look at the top golf courses in Scotland, probably somewhere in the top five, you'll find the Old Course, Carnoustie, Muirfield, Turnberry, and Dornick in some order. Royal Dornick has never hosted the Open Championship, yet it holds that kind of pedigree when it comes to golf in Scotland. Conditioning's top notch. It's it's got scale. God, I feel like I've said every course on this trip was my favorite course, but Royal Dornick uh, was the one that, I mean, it, it's just on another, it's on another level. It just takes every element and raises it to the nth degree. It's cool to think about the fact that Donald Ross grew up in the area, played the golf course, and was inspired heavily by its design in a lot of his golf courses that he laid out later in his life. If you can't tell, I like the course a lot. This is it. This, this is, is the it. final 18 holes. The dash to Dornick. This is the penalty. We've made it. The Tron is in the lead at 288. I'm in second at 266. Uh, DJ is at 208. Big Randy at 188. Two points for Deej this morning, six for Randy. <laughs> How many did DJ have? Two. Sick! What hurts? Well, everything hurts. Looks like a yellow paint behind those eyes. But, yeah, I just can't find the club face, so it's just, you know, you're just not even playing golf. You're just playing fucking swing defense, like, just totally nervous. I, is someone having a bit of a go at us? We ordered ham and cheese uh, toasties. We got haggis and cheese toasties. What does it taste like? Mm. It's like haggis. Mm. Like it's not like roast beef. It's it's pretty obvious. Like Tron is Tron's nervous. He couldn't get his his haggis bonbons down. He left his chicken behind. Didn't finish his beer. Mm. Uncle Tron. Hello, darling. All fun. You don't want to admit that you took it seriously, but after you play that much golf, and you know I'm competitive by nature, I think Solly is too, and uh, you know we wanted to, you want to win. I don't want to, I don't want to like admit it, but like I was, I was grinding near the end. I really wanted to win this. This is really cool. Guests from all over bring a ball marker to leave. Now we're here with our leader, Tron Carter. How is he going to handle the pressure? Oh, he loves it. God, he loves the cauldron. Here we go. We're at the first 336. I was worried driver might be a bit much. Any very well, baby. <laughs> Laced it, mate. Certainly not the shot I wanted to have on the first hole. Bit of a test here for Tricky John. Just put it through, put it through the bunker. Try. It's with a jail cell, pal. Yeah, it turns out driver was a bit much for Solly at the first. Effort, dude, come back. Sick! God, that was good. You suck. Do it. It's got such a great set of par threes. Every caddy there will tell you on the second hole, Tom Watson called it the shortest par five in the world. I think every course in Scotland has one of the shortest par five in the world, but you are at great risk of ping ponging back and forth if you miss the second green either to the left or to the right. We had one guy learn that the hard way. Will it hold? It will not. Yeah, we had to order. 
Oh, he's out. Good play. That walk from two to three T, and you, you kind of see the rest of the course open up in front of you. Gentlemen, welcome to the World Order. The golf course is, it's like a masterpiece. It is just full of such interesting shots. You look up and you're thinking, all right, that's the line I want to take. And then there's like a bunker just right there. And you're like, okay, well, I got to go left of that one. Well, if I go left of that one, I got to start thinking about this bunker, blah, blah, blah. And it's like that for 18 consecutive holes. There's absolutely no weaknesses. And, and I think that Whereas you might look at a place like Cullen as, you know, like that might've been my favorite day that we had because of the weather and because of the company and because of the quirkiness and because of all those things. I don't think that there's any doubt that Royal Dornick is the best test of golf that we played, uh, non old course division. I don't want to get any, the haters and losers can leave me alone on that one. Number five might be one of the greatest holes I've ever seen. All right, we're here at number six. Randy, what's the yardage book say about number six? So I'll- it's pretty uh, straightforward part three, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, some bunkers, whatever. And then it says, choose your club carefully and think of the choices you've made in life. You have to live with the consequences. It's kind of deep. <laughs> so, um, Royal Dornick has by far the most interesting yardage book. Uh, I've encountered anywhere. Um, you know, it shows you the hole and the layout and all that. But what's really cool, they have, and, and I'll quote from it, um, a short piece on each hole written by a local minister, Reverend Susan Brown. These thoughts are not designed to provide you with the perfect excuse to go golfing instead of to worship, but offer an opportunity to help your game to be a more complete experience as you begin around that exercises body, mind, and spirit. And listen, that's what I'm all about. So number 12, just flip into it randomly. It says, a path crossed the fairway. Reminisce and share with your partner how the path of your life crossed with a significant other in your life. Think of how wonderful is the gift of love. And, you know, like, how cool is that? You're out there grinding, like, I'm worrying about my swing, I got the shanks, and it's like, you know, none of that matters at all. And not to sound hokey, but it really did help me appreciate, you know, where I was and, and make a more special experience. Yeah, so actually a friend of ours, uh, Wes Harden, Dr. Wes, Wes Harden from Greenville, South Carolina, who's the club champion at Greenville Country Club in South Carolina and Royal Dornick. He's got, Club championships on both sides of the Atlantic, which is pretty pretty unique flex. He said, if you hit the green on all four of the par threes, you're you're doing something right. You're like that's very rare. That's short of it, I think. Oh, hey Wes, it's two for two, dog. Come on, there's there's plenty of room inside. Those are, those are pretty good. You there's, need us to mark those. I've played a lot of rounds here. I don't think I've seen four. Uh, there's four sitting there very often. At, while somebody's playing through our group. We, uh, the three of us hit our shots. Uh, yours was a little bit scummy, DJ. I'm not gonna lie. Go Gotta go. Why? Go in. You said it on the video yourself. Did I? Yeah, I yeah. That. that was scummy. <laughs> that was scummy. <laughs> I feel bad for that, guys. Oh, it can be done. You can make two. <laughs> Our leader. <Woo! laughs> yeah, we're here at number six uh, at Royal Dornick. We are what? One, two, three paces off the green. If you miss here, Please bow your heads while I read from the yardage book. A wide and straight fairway greets you, yet this hole is stroke index too. Sometimes it's when life appears straightforward that we find ourselves surprised by troubles. 
Now turn around and look behind you. Be stunned by the view. I actually like the old seventh. So they're gonna, they've basically picked up the seventh hole, lasered everything, and they moved it, or they're in the process of moving it 100 yards to the right. And then that'll open up uh, a different angle for the tee shot on eight. That's your view of the water there. Hope we can get back to our hole from here. Okay, number eight. Randy, what can you tell us about this one? Focus on Dunrob and Castle in the distance. I'm not seeing it. I'm, I'm not seeing it. But don't forget the drop. A reminder for people of faith that they have not to be so heavenly minded that they are of no earthly use. Keep your eyes open to who and what's around you. This is a reading from the Book of Yardage. So I've seen a lot of people tweeting about um, my bunker play. No, the shittiest part was like, I'm, I'm usually like a pretty good bunker player. Like, I don't know what happened. You're just, all of your feels, the shout out to Tiger, all of your feels are totally gone and you just, I blacked out for seven straight days and just forgot how to hit a bunker shot, which was really good timing. <laughs> it was a really good place to not be able to hit a bunker shot. That was super fun. Update as we make our turn to the homeward nine. Nine holes to play. Tron is on 292. I'm on 284. DJ 208. Randy 178. Might be a two man race at this point. Guys, um, you think we can make up 100 points? And I think games and, and betting, and this is not right. Can I, allow me to read from the book of yardage. I think our focus should be elsewhere. Yeah. Um, not in these, not in these games of chance and luck. And, what have you. <clears throat> Allow me. Faran is Gaelic for a well or a spring. Did you notice it? You passed a little river that otters tumble down in the early morning. Now you are at the halfway house. Take or buy a drink. And think of the simple joy of being refreshed. This is a reading from the Book of Yardage. Thanks be to Donald. Thanks be to Donald. Oh, number 10. I'll never forget number 10. Oh, hey! <laughs> Another one! Um, what you gotta understand is the, the shanks are, like, like I can feel it, right? Man, Randy got in his own head. It, it just didn't seem like that big of a deal, but he was so committed to the fact that he had the shanks. After one shank, he is like, dude, I can't even play coming in. And we're like, no, 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 hit another one, hit another one. Bang! Another shake. I've really been battling him all trip, and it, it just felt like a matter of, of when, not if. Come on! <laughs> I just can't. From here, I just don't know what to do. And, you know, golf's like the worst thing in the world because you know it's gonna happen, and yet, like, you just have to get on with it. Like, I couldn't call a time. Like, I, I could have stood on that box for two hours trying to get the proper feel for my golf swing. Um, had that been like socially acceptable, like I just knew I was gonna shank the ball. That's a good swing thought. You just can't hit it. But I feel like I'm almost coming like that. Well, yeah, you are, because you're not <laughs> squaring it up. Flip it. This is attempt number four. <laughs> Rob that, Harris. That, that counts. <laughs> I'm proud of you, dude. <laughs> Thank you for sacrificing the body. You your demons. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I ended up shanking like three more before I had enough. And that was like the breaking point for me. I played the rest of the back nine with just woods and a putter. Not bad. I parred 16, which is this huge uphill par four. I hit driver and then driver off the deck and two putted. Um, I was really happy with that one. A couple holes that wasn't good at all. Yeah, it was tough in the bunkers. Trying to like carve a hybrid out of the bunker was tough. One may call this a bit of a spot of bother. Yeah, it's not, it's not ideal. Might need to get deep in the rule book and see what's technically constitutes a legal stroke. Is this a stroke? 
if I keep one of those. Well, I wouldn't turn a seven iron over. Well, well I wouldn't listen to what your, yeah, <laughs> what your advice is. It's tricky. Well, I haven't shanked one of these. I think that's the play. And you'll take that. It's really not that hard of a shot. This is for the mega up and down. <laughs> not today, please. Thank you. God, I've hit a lot of, I've hit a lot of honest putts. <laughs> Just haven't caught in. What do you think? Nine holes ago, you think Tron's going to hold on? <laughs> That's all he's going to do. It might look like... Uh, Who's the guy at the Braves game with the freeze? Charles, I'm just going to head start with the freeze is coming. Oh, today! Uh -oh, Go in. maybe. Come on. Go in! Shot. Good shot. Here comes the freeze. Oh! <laughs> Good three. Eight to play. All right, it seems like you maybe need some good vibes after that last one. Yeah, for what, sure. What are you seeing here about the 11th? So the 11th is called approach. It's a long hole with the chance of a seat at the end. How important is rest and relaxation? Be at peace, no matter the score. It's like, this is another reading from the Book of Yardage. Thanks be to Donald. Oh, look at this shot. That's so good. People at home have no idea how hard that shot was. The British fans know. Oh my God. That's good. So good. Go in. God, that's good. Great shot. That might be the shot of the tournament. Seriously. Huge. Huge. 298 to 290. Six holes to play. Randy from 165. He's got a hybrid. Oh, just going the other way. I can't remember exactly what tee we were on. I think it was 12 or 13 when you could start hearing the the bagpipers. The weather got a little bit more blustery, temperature dropped, I think there was some moisture in the air. Uh, and it just set this, it was just the perfect way to, to, to end the trip and kind of put a bow on everything. It was the quintessential Scottish golf experience. You know, setting sun, fading light, and, and playing one of the best golf courses in the world. Mr. Phil, punching a hybrid. Hit it. Great shot. The lead has been cut to six with five to play. The freeze is closing in. What, 14 is really, really cool. Um, that's, it, it's bunkerless, but it's the perfect it's a perfect kind of riddle to solve. You've got to, you've got to kind of hug the one side to get the proper angle, but it's just not a very comfortable shot hitting it down the left side. Ah! Oh. Play. And he's done it. And then Solly pretty much caught me heading into uh, heading into 16. 
Great shot. Seems to have found some gores. Not good. And I had to take a, a, uh, uh, what do you call it? An unplayable. Um, you know, some people on the video may say that it was a scummy unplayable. It was more than a club length, but I found the ball. I just, I took a kind of an Irish drop combined with an unplayable. Uh, and then Sally, inexplicably from seemingly in the middle of the fairway, um, blew one into the gorse. I was just like, I, I, it was like an out of body thing watching it. Tron's competitive grit, it's not really existent, I wouldn't say. Uh, I had him, I had him beat, I ran him down and I collapsed. I, I doubled 16, I don't know what happened from the middle ferry. I was striping it at Dornick. I had the lag going in the swing. And just a brief moment where I just lost concentration and I made a double and that was the difference maker. That was it. That was the tournament was won on the 16th hole. Uh, and I'm really hesitant to make the comparison at all. I hope you don't edit this part out, but it gave me incredible perspective on what it's like to watch guys compete on TV. Cause I had one guy I needed to run down, just one of them, the guy I wanted to beat the most. And I couldn't do that. Like I couldn't even beat Tron. So like how these guys are able to hold off, you know, fields full of 10 guys running behind them that are actually world-class players. It really did kind of put things into perspective for me. I haven't played a competitive round of golf in 15 plus years, like a true competitive round. And this felt like the most intense competition and there was nothing on the line at all. You know, you didn't, you didn't want to win like that. Um, you know, and then I, after that, it was pretty much like I had to just kind of buckle down. Jesus Christ. Somebody ended up there. Probably. All right, Probably the kid's got, I don't there. know, 120. He's going to chip a little hybrid. Good leave. He should be able to actually putt it with the driver right up that ramp. 17 at Royal Dornick. This might be my favorite hole of the trip. Tron Carter, this is kind of a huge putt. Five, zero points. Solly picks up two more. Six point ball game. Barring a, a hole out of any kind, Tron just needs to get in the house with five or less. Taking the long, solitary walk to the last hole. Modern John Fendeville. 18 is a ball busting finish, too. I mean, it's. It, it felt like it was playing 600 yards straight into the wind, straight into the sunset. 135 holes across however many courses that is. Tron now looking like he may emerge as the champion. Guys, if you'll allow me, I'd like to conclude our, not only our round today, but our round, uh, our trip here in Scotland with a reading from the Book of Yardage. Please bow your heads. As you prepare to tee off, think of the number of people in the last 400 years who have stood where you are. Regardless of your round, be grateful for the energy to play and for the company and the scenery. Take a deep breath. Swing slow and true and give thanks for the exercise of body, mind, and spirit. This is a reading from the Book of Yardage. Thanks be to Donald. Thanks be to Donald. Trunk Carter going through his routine as he prepares to play the biggest hole of his life. Oh, it's a cracker of a drive. Beauty. I think that's all I got, guys. <laughs> Great swing. He's got 217, dead into the fan. 
I think even he would tell you this isn't the best place to, for a must make birdie. Heroic <laughs> three iron? What's that? Heroic three iron? Heroic three iron, it's gonna be. <laughs> really bad, he says. A lot of gas. Not a good. Locked it. On the green. On the green. Your putts to clinch. Last well, all the trip here. Can't hold anything back now. This is kind of an homage to our forefathers here. We're going to play the mega ground game. Has he given it enough? That's way short, huh? Whatever. Hopefully it's a good video. John Carter has two punts for the win. He's given this quite a wrap. Really good yeah. weight. Oh. Just really well good done. weight. Excellent weight. Well done. Oh, the will pot really of his life. Finish Ritz. or will he put a will mark on it? it? Is he going to put a mark? Oh, he's got to put a mark on it. That is a win for the ages. God, a week long marathon. Congrats, man. You did it. You did it. Okay. Two heavyweights going great, at it. Great play. Great play. You're, you're going to be a father. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, hey. Oh, trip of a lifetime, boys. <laughs> Deej, I enjoyed it, man. Oh, always. All right, boys. Dude, that was a blast. Great, great. Oh, Let's great. drink beer. This whole trip was just make-believe. It was just a dream to get these conditions that we got and to have it Saturday afternoon, of course, almost entirely to ourselves in this weird kind of moody light. And we were coming in the back nine. There's bagpipes that start playing in the distance. And I'm like, dude, is, this is fake. Like, this is all fake. There's no way you could craft a trip that would be had this many successes in it. The golf being so great, the conditions so great, and finishing at one of the best golf courses in the world and being just so remote out there, man, it was the perfect way to end the trip. We sadly wrapped up the trip, went back to Edinburgh. Um, still some debate on how to pronounce it. I just don't think we have the proper accents to pronounce it at all, unless we are really able to capture the Scottish accent. Well, first of all, it's Edinburgh, all right? The way that Randy pronounces it is, it's disgusting. I love seeing new cities for the first time. That was the first time I've been in Edinburgh. What a great tour guide, shout out Yvonne. She took us all around the city. Uh, we really got the full tourist attraction. <sighs> that night in Edinburgh was, that was like the glorious madness. Talk to me about that last night in Edinburgh. <laughs> oh gosh, we got a little loose. Having everything on hard drives and captured and everything done, uh, yeah, I think we're we were ready to get turned. The night out in Edinburgh. Listen, I've I've flown across the Atlantic several times, and one thing I've learned is you don't want to be hungover flying across the Atlantic either direction. You just don't. No one heeded that advice, including myself. I got caught up in it. Listen, we all got excited. That violinist started just cranking out the hits. Big Randy's eyes were just like beating like a cartoon at this woman. And the dancing commenced. And I think we had already called cut. We had called a rap that we weren't going to film anymore. But the, some of that dancing just had to be captured. <laughs> So it was it was a good way to cap off the trip and uh, and really I think my dancing skills have improved drastically over the last few years. I was lucky enough to do a big trip through Scotland last summer before I moved home and uh, it was fun. It was a but it was a solo road trip. It just wasn't you know it just didn't have that camaraderie factor. You kind of staying by yourself each night. I mean, 
this is where I wish I had like a better vocabulary or like I was smarter or could offer something more profound, but it it met and exceeded all my expectations. And I'm just excited, I, you know, uh, there's more of Scotland to explore outside of where we went. You could spend a lifetime going back and exploring the place. It was everything I could have asked for uh, for my first Scot Scottish experience. I think the hopefully the takeaway from this series is that all of those things, uh, this entire trip is it's doable. It's not gonna you're not gonna come back jet lagged for six weeks. You're not gonna get lost. You're not gonna have any issues with language barriers or anything like that. It is if you want to take a golf trip you need to take this golf trip. Advice I'd give somebody planning a trip, it's so tempting to try to drive all different places. And I think it's important to get to maybe two different regions, but you can set up shop in one place. You can. There's definitely a great golf course within driving distance of that. And there's so many other good golf courses that maybe you haven't heard of, maybe you have, but to get to experience what golf is like at, at quote unquote normal places in Scotland is maybe the most eye-opening factor of a trip or most eye-opening and most fun experience of it is when you roll up to a place and you're like what brought you here even the people that are members there it's kind of cool you feel like you're i don't know off the beaten path a little more than than a bag tag berry is this is coming from a bag tag berry by the way in season one i think was obviously based in australia i think for the bulk of our audience it was hey australia is really really hard to get to in case you never make it here's what it looks like and season two i think was much more you know, it had a different feel that was kind of, hey, this is where basically all of golf history started. So let's lean a little heavier on the history aspect of this. Let's kind of teach people a little bit more about these courses while obviously showing us, you know, still looking like idiots and not being able to play out of bunkers. That's a fun element of it too. And season three is going to feel a lot different than either of those. And uh, hopefully we're still, none of us have killed each other by the end of it. Boon -em 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 -em, boon -em 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 -em. California, here we come. Cut! <laughs> All right, that's a wrap on Big Randy season two of Tour Sauce. Yeah. All right. That's a wrap on TC. Cool. Season two. Good shit. I think that's a wrap. Oh my Finally, God. Finally, we made it. Cheers, Kirk on. This turned into like a five hour movie about Scotland. <laughs> Might be too much work. It might be too much content. <laughs> Cut! We're done!